to be doing my second makeup tutorial. I am going to be doing a cut crease eye makeup with a little bit of glitter. I'm going to be using two eyeshadow palettes today with the cut crease. I'm going to be using my Tyler in Bloom palette just for my um, creasing color. So I'm going to be using my Sweetheart, okay, just down the bottom here. And that's what I'm going to be using, I guess, is my transitional color. My deeper colors that I'm going to be using is from my Modern Renaissance palette. My Modern Renaissance palette is a little bit old. It is my go-to. I use it in nearly every makeup I do on myself and on my clients. So it has had it a little bit, but I'm going to be using the Primavera, the Red Ochre, and probably the Venetian Red as well to create this cut crease look. Uh, I also have the Too Faced. Uh, glitter pens. I'm going to be using the yellow gold and I'm going to put a little bit of a yellow gold line through there as well just to zhuzh it up a little bit. So I'm going to be starting with my Ambroise uh, primer which is really just a moisturizer. I'm really liking this on myself at the moment because I'm finding that it gives my foundation a really good finish. Now I have a normal to probably oily um, skin type, but I find that when I'm using a matte finishing foundation, I feel really matte and dry. So I do like to have something that is a little bit more hydrating and nourishing and it's going to help give that little bit more of a glowy finish. If you have a little bit more of an oilier skin type or even more so down the lines of an acne skin type, that moisturizer probably wouldn't be for you. And it may affect how long the foundation actually lasts. On me or on a dry skin type, it would be perfect. So I am going to be using my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation today. It is my holy grail foundation. I know a lot of makeup artists out there um, prefer to use products that don't have SPF in them because occasionally with flashes, you can get flashback with your um, SPF. I haven't had that problem yet myself um, with the Estee Lauder. I find that I have been using it on my brides. I've been using it on models for photo shoots. I've even been using it on myself when I've occasionally done a little bit of modeling for Lisa Trujillo Active Wear. And the six photo shoots I've done that I've done my own makeup for, I haven't had any flashbacks. So, uh, so far, so good for me. Um, the reason why I love it so much is because it just doesn't move. I find that I can apply it, it sets like concrete, it doesn't move throughout the whole day. Now, I do actually like like again what I was saying before quite a dewy finish so if you are someone that likes a matte finish it's perfect for if you're someone that likes a dewy finish like myself you will need to have some sort of primer that's going to give your skin a little bit more moisture before applying it and then you're also probably going to want to finish with a um, hydrating spray of some sort as well I find that if I'm really concerned with how long it's going to last I don't worry about the hydrating spray maybe more so of a setting spray but if I'm wanting more of a glowy dewy kind of look then I definitely will go in with some sort of hydrating spray which is what I'm going to be doing for you guys today so I always do my eye makeup first if I'm doing something that's quite glam I am going to just use the foundation as my base over the lids to start with many makeup artists may use concealers may use some sort of eyeshadow primers or they might just use their foundation or they might use both so today I'm going to go in with just the Estee Lauder foundation just over my eyelid area to apply my eyeshadows. So I'm going to be using to start with to apply my foundation today, I'm going to be using the Dirty 30s um, Beauty Blenders. So I find these are amazing. They're much more affordable than what the Beauty Blender brand is in Sephora. Um, and you get six in a pack. So I'm finding that I'm able to use a clean one every time I have clients, um, obviously on yourself and in between clients, as long as you're cleaning them with hot soapy water and you're sanitizing them, they let out to dry, etc. then they're fine to reuse. Absolutely. But I just find them so inconvenient and they're so much more affordable. The cheaper um, Beauty Blenders that you can buy from Kmart, Target, or even Mecca, I find that are really firm even after 
um, running water through them, they just don't have a bounce to it. Where the Beauty Blender is amazing and I hadn't found anything else that had that same quality um, bounce to the sponge, I guess. And then when I found Dirty 30s, it's exactly the same. So I'm really happy with them. So I'm just going to go over the lid with the foundation. Okay, so I'm going to be now using the Tartlet in Bloom palette and I'm going to be using the Sweetheart color with my fluffy brush from Morphe and I'm going to be just going in a back and forth motion increase. So you won't have a huge difference. It's just a lighter pink color that is coming up through that crease for my darker burgundy colors that are going to be transitioning up into that color. So I'm going to go in with, I think I might use the Venetian red to start with. And in exactly the same place, just a little bit lower, I'm going to start working it back and forth. So I'm not going to be using like circular motions. I'm really just using a back and forth motion. And now to just deepen it a little bit, I'm going to go in with the red ochre color and I'm going to be using a really small round contour brush. It's tiny and it's a perfect size for just in that creased area. And this one is from Crown Brushes Australia. And now I'm going to be doing the start of the cut crease. So I'm going to be using a MAC product. It is called Soft Ochre is the color in the Pro Longwear Paint Pot. So these paint pots are really good to be used as just eyeshadow primers in general. You can put them over the whole lid and then you can go in with your eye makeup. If you do do that, just make sure that you put like a cream or skin colored based eyeshadow down first before applying your eyeshadows, just because I find that it is quite a sticky product and once you apply it, it's really difficult to actually go in and blend your, um, your colors up or across so I generally find that I use it more so for a cut crease but it can work as an eyeshadow primer as well and it does work really well to just make make the colors uh, stand out more be more vibrant have a little bit more pigment to them um, it does prevent uh, eyeshadow falling onto the cheekbone as well and it does prevent creasing so if you're fine if you find that you have oily eyelids or that just over the day they can some that your colors can crease or just blend in a little bit more within with each other I guess um, that would be a perfect product for you so I'm going to actually be using it though to create my crease so I'm just going to get a concealer brush 
and I am going to make sure it's all about smoothness. So I want to have quite a bit of product on my brush, but make sure I guess that there's no lumps or bumps and just make sure that it's really smooth. So I'm just using the back of my hand to do so. And I'm just going to use my small little mirror that I have up the front here. So I'm just getting a little closer to create, to create that perfect cut crease. So this is what's going to give that really harsh edge. So I'm not going to take it right across, I'm just starting that line and then you can start to colour in. So I bring the colour to about, a th uh, t I guess, three quarters of the eye and leave about a quarter on the outer edge. And I'm just starting to blend it in with that burgundy kind of colour that I have to towards the outer edge. Now, before adding any, any eye shadows into this, I'm going to do the other eye and make sure that it matches. And you can see already that having that cut crease and that lighter color on the inner eye has made my eyes that little bit more open, where when you have a darker color across the whole lid, which is great for smoky eyes, but you'll find that this look will always make your eyes look bigger. So next step is to put a light gold champagne kind of color. I'm going to use the Primavera color in the Anastasia Beverly Hills for this. It's my most used color in this palette. I love it. It's not too gold or not too orange, but it's not too white, I guess. So I really like this color. So I'm going to use more of a pathing technique to place over the MAC product that I had applied. A 
and go right up to that line. And then just start blending it out a little bit. Now I am going to do a nice dark chocolate brown on the outer corner to blend it into. So I'll pre repeat that on the other side. And now I'm going to use the Cypress Umber, which is like a nice dark chocolatey color, just in the outer corners. And I'm going to blend that over into that gold color. and we're starting to come together. So I'm going to just place a little bit of the darker colors on the lower lash line as well. I do actually want to just go in with the red ochre, ochre to start with, and then I might put a little bit of a darker brown on the outer corner as well. I find that if I am only using like a red based color underneath, I can look quite sick. So it is good to have a little bit of darkness under there as well. So that's just the red ochre and now I'm going to go in with the cypress umber just in the outer corner. Now, while I'm on that bottom line, I might actually go in and finish it with a little bit of mascara. I'm just contemplating whether to do a bit of a liner under there. I generally don't do a lot of eyeliner on my bottom lash line because I find that it makes my eyes look smaller. Um, so this is just preference. I'm gonna try a little bit of a darker, well, a black liner on the cry line and see how it looks. If I don't like it, I can take it off. My wing first before I apply the glitter line. Um, I'm going to be using a Maybelline product. I think I might start with my favorite Maybelline is their Master Precise Liquid Liner and it's in the pen form. So it's like a felt tip end. And I'm going to apply my liner along the top lid as if I'm not doing a wing and then I'm gonna add the wing to it once that's complete. So making sure I go from thin to thick and that will create also that almond appearance.
and then once you're happy with your top liner you can then attempt your wing so i'm going to just draw one straight line from the inner corner of my eye out towards the outer brow and then repeat on the other side and I'm just going to make sure that they are going in the same direction before I go in and I finish the wing. It's much easier to fix the wing if it's kind of heading like this. It's, you can just use a q-tip, take that one off and then redraw it so it's the same. Okay, so I've got one line, one line. I'm happy with the direction that they're heading in. Now I can go in and make sure that they have a really fine point on them and that they do come into a triangular kind of shape. So connecting it first to the line up, coloring it in and then bringing the point out. And then you can see is my first wing. And my second. Put a little bit of mascara on my bottom lashes so they're finished. And then before I do my top mascara, I'm going to just do that glitter line. Now, you have to be really careful with this. This glitter does dry quite quickly and it won't smudge, but I am going to draw the line and just let it sit and just have my eye rest in a certain position until I think it's dry enough so that I can open my eye back up to normal. Okay, so it's not quite thick enough for my liking, so I'm just going to go back over. And it's starting to come together. I'm going to do one more layer. It is really important that you try to get your false lashes as close as you possibly can to your own natural lash line so that there is no gap um, and just obviously let it dry before opening up. So I'm going to attempt by just applying with the tweezers straight on and then putting pressure along the lash line and see how I go.
Okay, so I am going to be going in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow. I am going to be using the color Blonde. And I'm going to be using, I think it's just a Sephora brush. It's just an angled brush that I am going to be using with my Dip Brow. Once again, all about that smoothness. I generally use the back of my hand, get a bit of product, make sure that I don't have too much and that it's just all smooth on the brush. And there's just no lumps and bumps. Okay. So I'm going to be drawing my line underneath because that's the most defined part that I want. Everything else I somewhat want blended. So the tail of the brow can be quite quite nice and tapered, but the rest of it, I want to be nice and blend along the top. We don't want no blocky brows. And then I'm just going to start blending that color up. Now that my brows are nice and defined, I am going to use the Ofra highlighter because that's what I'm going to be using on my cheekbones when I get there. I'm going to be also using that just in the arch section to give it a little bit of a lift. Back in with my Dirty 30 sponge and I am going to be using my Estee Lauder Double Wear and I am just going to be using that bouncing technique over the whole area. When you use your beauty blenders, whether it be the Beauty Blender brand or Dirty 30 or a cheap one, just always make sure that you wet it first and that you dry out the excess with tissue, paper towel, towel, whatever. Just get all the excess moisture out. Now you obviously wanna be careful of the work that you have done around your eyes. So I'm just making sure that we're blended around the hairline and the nose. Okay. Now going to do a little bit of contour and I'm going to be using the Tarte Tape Shape. This is in deep. And I've just went down the sides of my nose Underneath my cheekbones, you can put a small amount along the forehead and a little bit under the lip to make the lip look a little bit more protruding.
These are actually Napoleon um, Purtis Beauty Blenders that I got given in like a little goodie bag. Um, so let's see how these goes. I might actually use the black one. I like that it has that flat edge. Another tape shape for my highlighting, and I'm using Fair Neutral. And once again, I'm just going to go a little bit further down the eye because I'm going to be blending it up, so I don't want it to affect too much of the eye makeup. Let's try the little sponge. So I do have my bottom lashes have got a little bit of the concealer on them. So I will fix them. Just going to deepen it a little bit more with the Hourglass bronzer as well. I'm going to, just because we're doing a full glam, might as well just make it a full glam. And I'm just going to go over those areas with the powder as well. And a little bit under the jawline make sure that we're nice and blended and this is just a big fluffy brush no product And just a tiny little bit of blush. I am using the Hourglass Radiant Magenta, my favorite color. So I'm going to be using the Ofra Rodeo Drive. Uh, it is my absolute go-to at the moment. I am just going to remove the foundation off my lips. I'm going to use a matte lipstick in Whirl. I am not too sure how this is going to look because it's quite a deep lipstick, especially on me. I'm quite fair, so let's see how we go. It is a little bit brown for my liking, but I think we can pull it off. Okay, so that is nearly the finish of our look. We need to do some hydrating spray just so that I am nice and glowy. Um, I have a heap of hydrating sprays. 
Um, I'm going to be using today the Skinstitute Hydrating Spray. It is actually called the Multi Active Mist and it hydrates and brightens. So it's a really good product to hydrate and nourish the skin even if you don't have makeup on, but I find it amazing to freshen up your makeup throughout the day and also keep you nice and hydrated and glowy. And that is our look for today. So as you can see, we have our cut crease with glitter. And I am going to go and do my hair so that you can have a full glam overall look. So here is the final product, guys. I've done my hair, makeup's done. I hope you enjoy today's um, tutorial. It's only my second one, so give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're following me and tell me what you feel like.